Okay, so I've already spoken about uh, that bit over there for the bush foods and everything. Yeah. So this area is called Paninkaku, so it's another hunting cave for the bush boys. So they've come here to learn how to hunt, okay? okay. So this nice kind of flat uh, uh, stone here. Mm -hmm. So the boys would hide behind there. Okay? Mm -hmm. There's a nice window there that we can see. So they'd hide behind there. Uh, the owls would be there explaining what's going on. The men would be out the front. Uh, they'd camouflage themselves, pick up some sand dirt, try and hide their scent. They'll either hide in the grass or up a tree. Okay, they'll wait for a big mob of kangaroos to come in or some emus. They'll count them as they came in, see how many there were. Uh, wait for them to have a drink at the water hole. So they never used the water hole, they just left it for the animals. They didn't want to leave their scent around, didn't go swimming, didn't drink from it, anything like that. So as the animals were leaving, they would spear the last one. The rest would, would run away, of course, but they wouldn't know what's happening. Okay, so they wouldn't associate this place with death, with fear. So when they did spear them, they would go for, uh, they wouldn't go for any major organs. Didn't want to spill that blood. Again, leave that uh, scent of fear. Uh, so when they did spear them, they would have a big uh, barb on the end. Uh, very long shaft, so it would drag across the ground, and they could track them for miles. So when they caught up to them, uh, followed their tracks, they would have a big club on their head, and they'd club them on the neck. Okay? And that would be the death blow. Really. Right. So the kids, uh, the boys would be watching this, they'd be about 10 or 11. Uh, kind of old enough to start uh, hunting for themselves, to start uh, kind of getting into it. And the elders will be explaining what's going on, okay? So all these kind of rock art that we have in here. Oh yeah, the yeah. rock art. So the one that we can kind of see uh, more clearly mm -hmm. is this one, this red one right in the front. All right. So does anybody know what that is? Do we have a guess? It's a footprint of some kind. No, not sure. So that's a camel's footprint. Oh. Okay. As we know, camels aren't native to Australia. So you can really imagine yeah. the first time they would have seen this footprint or the actual camel. It'd be quite uh, quite weird looking, really. Right. Okay, so as we move along, make sure you have a look at that window there. Oh, yeah. Well, that's the window. Mm -hmm. That hole, yeah. yeah. Classroom. So this all this walls here, one two, 
one giant blackboard. Uh, but all the lessons, all the teachings, they never get rubbed off. They just get uh, drawn over. So layer upon layer of these different symbols. So we do know what quite a lot of them mean. So for example, uh, this one up here. So it's circle upon circle. So it means a few different things. So one is a water hole. So when you drop a pebble into water or some rain, it makes that ripple effect. Right. So another one is a place of importance or significance. So it could be referring to Kajira Uluru. Um, another one, when they're connected by a line like that, and this one as well, it means a journey or a song line. Okay, so a journey or a a song line. Yeah. So it could be someone telling someone how to get from point A to point B using particular landmarks. Okay. So this one here, this big yellow horseshoe shape. Uh, this one means a person. Okay. So they always do their rock art from a bird's eye view. Hmm. So if someone's kneeling in the ground or they're sitting on their bum, legs spread out, hmm. uh, they leave this mark on the ground. So it depends if it's a man or a woman, they'll draw their tools next to them. And mm. that's how you know if it's a man or a woman. So this one we can't see anything, so we just assume that it's a child or an uninitiated uh, person. Okay. So the one right in the middle there mm -hmm. kind of looks like a yellow uh, brown feather. So that's the honey grevillea flower. So this flower has a bright yellow colour. It produces this sweet nectar on the ends. Uh, it tastes a bit like honey. So the anemone, they'll come along, they'll either suck it off the tree like a lollipop, or they'll mix it with some water, uh, make some cordial, okay? Hmm. <laughs> so the guy right next to it there is the same as the one over there, kind of going like that. So that's an evil spirit. His name is Mamu. So he's kind of like a boogeyman to us. Mm -hmm. So the adults will tell the kids, you know, don't go out of this cave at night or else Mamu will get you, okay? Because hmm. we know there are a lot of snakes out there, and you don't want kids wandering around getting bitten by snakes. Because, hmm. uh... The only treatment for a snake bite back then. So you lay down, you have to go to sleep. So it'll slow your heart rate down, stop the poison from moving around. Mm. So you either wake up very sick or you just wouldn't wake up at all. That's mm. all I could do really. Uh, so what else we got? This one here looks like a city house bridge or a grub or something. And that one over there looks like an eyelash. Mm. So this is the only piece of clothing that the enemy would wear. I mentioned it a bit before. So the men now get made belts. So when they came of age, their grandmas and mums, they'd have their hair grow really long. They'd cut it off, weave it with some grass, and make a belt. Okay? Mm. So the women, they would get made a skirt. Mm. Um, so they didn't wear any other clothes, didn't wear any shoes, no hats, nothing like that. So this big empty space here, okay? So there used to be a lot of rock out there, but back in the early days of tourism, their cameras, black and white, didn't pick up all the colours. So in, kind of, in order to bring out the vibrancy, they would splash water on there. Okay? Mm. Because these paints are pretty much just made out of rock, ground up rock in mm. general, they've been washed away. It's pretty obvious to us now, but they didn't really take care of things the way they do uh, back then. So we kind of, uh, we, we try and take care of what we have left now. It's uh, the best example of rock art here at Uluru. And uh, before we leave, I just